One day, a 19-year-old in Fresno again is on his way to work. His name is Joe. He's addicted to heroin. His father introduced him to heroin. He's going to a pizza parlor to work, and uh, he drives by the tent. He sees it in Fink White Park. He's driving by, and a voice says, get in the tent. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. Our services begin at 7, but the crowds start forming well in advance. So he's there with other people sitting in that tent waiting. And finally, I walk out. It's clear as a bell. The Lord says, do not preach yet. There's a young man that I'm going to touch. And you look for him, and I'll show him to you. So he w sat what would have been about the fifth row in the aisle right there. And again, I keep mentioning Frank for a reason, because he was right there. So I, I walked to him, and I said, uh, in front of all these people, what's your name? Joe. I said, Joe, you are addicted to heroin, aren't you? Imagine what that does to somebody. The only reason it didn't throw him for a loop is that he heard a voice tell him to get in the tent. <laughs> so he stands up and he's delivered of demonic power. Heroin addiction, gone. Power of God flows on him. Well then, I pray with him to be born again, and he's born again. Then, like any self-respecting evangelist, I spin on my heel after he's saved and do a little victory march. And the Lord said, where are you going? You're not done yet. So I look at him, and I said, Joe, we're not done yet. I put my hand on his stomach. I said, something's going to come out of you. It's going to be a language that you've never spoken because the first thing that any addict that gets saved needs is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. They need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And suddenly this beautiful language is coming out of him, filling the whole tent. I'm not a dummy. I put the mic right down by his mouth and everybody could hear this heavenly language. These are the drastic things that began to happen when I got this understanding. America's in trouble. Business as usual changes. Mordecai looked at Esther and said, it's not a beauty contest anymore. It's not a beauty contest. These churches that are, that are absolutely built on human marketing and entertainment are going to go over like a pregnant pole vaulter in the future. <laughs> There's absolutely no context for it now. Church... The man said at the banquet, go out and get them. Go out and get them. And bring them to the best thing they've ever seen. But you know what? I think that five years ago, I couldn't have told you this. But now you realize the manipulation of the pandemic. You realize what they were doing to try to destroy your business. That they could go to the French laundry and eat, but you had to stay home. And that, I, and that Nancy could go get her hair done and then turn around and put that same beauty parlor out of business. That is the heartless, empty, villainous spirit that's on this state. And how dare you defend it? And how dare you call me a radical for exposing it? What's needed now is what, that, what Mordecai said. You have come to the kingdom. God gave you this building. God gave you these resources. God planted this church, put fire in the hearts of your pastors, and got this university because we're about to lead thousands to Jesus. Thousands! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I have one last thing to say. You don't need to know their names, but they were these very famous pastors. And because I'm a little older, I got away with stuff. There's a beautiful thing about getting older is that you get away with stuff. Uh, and so they all sit there. They literally influenced nearly 150,000 Christians in their churches. So I asked them a question. I said, uh, 
Can you name one, the name of a mega church in Los Angeles in 1906? I said, name a church, a mega church that was existing in LA in 1906. They were all theologians. Most of them had been to Fuller and not one could name a mega church in LA in 1906. But I said, you know, all of you seem to remember the Azusa Street Revival because history doesn't remember this stuff. It remembers revival. I was in the Jesus movement. I was in the Jesus movement. I wasn't in like partway over my head. I was in the white water swirling in the middle of it. And we watched California inundated by souls being saved in numbers that none of us could have imagined. What we hated is when church came back to normal. We hated it. We hated it when it was regular. We hated it. I used to, I could tell a church's death by the way they give their announcements. Wednesday night is our regular midweek meeting. Regular. What a word. The only time regular is right is if you're talking about constipation. No, other, otherwise, regularity, predictability, the same song, the same seat, the same ending, the same everything. In the Jesus movement, we didn't know when it was going to end. We had no idea. We were on watch 24 hours because the fish were jumping into the boat. Hardened criminals saved. Leftist radicals saved. One a young man named Roger Gottlieb was born again in Berkeley. He was an atheist Jew. He led 17 others to the Lord just like him. Suddenly we had this core called the Lions of Judah. You couldn't stop them. You could not. They feared nothing. Wouldn't you love it if Destiny Church became a nuclear reactor of miracles and soul winning? Wouldn't you love it? Well, that's what's coming. That's what's coming. That's what's coming. Oh, glory to God.